Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to the first of our Let's Draw videos here on Garblag Games. This is the first time I'll be doing one uh, that's not narrated over a pre-filmed recording. Uh, I'll be talking as I draw. And what we're doing here is we're completing the... This is the map that I've recently uh, done the first level of, the ground level of the Mountain Toll Keep. This is a bit of an experiment, this video for us, so your feedback will be greatly appreciated. So any comments below would be great. Here is an example of the bit of the finished map um, in detail that I'll just keep on the screen there just as a little bit of flavor, just so we can see what's going on. <clears throat> this is the first time I've had a setup where we're trying to look in detail at something uh, in front of me uh, so that you guys can see it. So we really want feedback on this. Hopefully this camera is on 1080p, on focused on the right area, which is going to be, as you can see, what we have here is we have, this is called the Erie, uh, oh, let's see if we can see my finger. This is Erie Tower and this is Falcon Tower, mainly because it looks about like the Millennium Falcon. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm building up the extra layers of the tower. Uh, here, as you can see, I've sketched out some of them. Um, off here which you can't really see very well but here hopefully you can see this quite well I'm working on the next level of these towers and I just thought I'd talk to you a little bit about uh, my process what I do and how I make these maps um, so here we go uh, please don't forget to go and check out our Facebook Twitter and Instagram um, if you're watching this on our patreon and you uh, are the first time here thank you for watching uh, please don't forget to check out the featured tags down the left hand side for the free content you can get. If you're watching this on YouTube um, after the fact, please go check out our Patreon. It's just patreon.com forward slash Garblad Games. And there you can get all kinds of free maps like the stuff that you see here uh, and here. And hopefully this will give you a little bit of an idea into how I do things. Now, this is obviously a raw format. I'm going to be working on this to try and do better Let's Draw videos. And we may think of a better name for the videos, and I may create a better uh, playlist for it. But this is <clears throat> kind of our first go at this, so bear with us. Um, so I draw maps and create adventures from them. So just a quick plug, for example. Uh, it might be a little bit difficult for you to see there. It might be easier for you to see here. Uh, Garblad Games, Adventure Location 1, The Abandoned Tavern. And here you can see, I've got a nice map, and there's various pages in here that detail the location, break it down, give you information about the setting and adventure hooks, etc. Doing a series of these, uh, we have the abandoned tavern, number one. We have the smuggler's hideout, number two, which has got a bit of color. I like to do a bit of color every now and then. And the mountain toll keep, which we're working on here uh, today is uh, going to be number three now <clears throat> this map is free right now on our patreon you can go and get that now a nice uh, 600 dpi rendering of this image a uh, little pdf um, or the image off the post so you can go and get that for free what i'm working on now is the extra tower levels that will go into the adventure location which will be available for our adventurer plus tier um, patrons which is four dollars and up uh, and then um, our initiates uh, later in the month of February which we're recording in uh, will get to vote on which one they uh, want more out of the smugglers hideout and the mountain tulki now this was <clears throat> this was inspired this map by a suggestion from one of our uh, viewers uh, friends of the show and hosts of the old world podcast which is in the unofficial Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay uh, podcast, suggested that we do some kind of border control in a mountain. Uh, and I thought this would be really good. Uh, what about a toll keep that sits on the kind of edge of a uh, mountain pass, as you can see. Sorry, I'm just getting used to this. This is the other way around for me, you see. Ooh, let's keep going. Here we go. Here we go. So the idea being that you have this kind of road old roadway through here which is worn out both sides but around this toll keep it's actually still intact 
The toll keep's still intact. This, the idea is that this is not some sort of ruin. This is in fact a functioning facility. Um, so I'm looking down a lot because I'm trying to get the map right on the screen. And um, <clears throat> so in order to flesh it out fully, I thought we need additional levels for the tower uh, on each side. And as I said, we have Eerie Tower and we have Falcon Tower because it looks a bit like the Millennium Falcon with the front bit and the other bits. Now, <clears throat> I've got a series of photos on Twitter uh, and I can share those uh, on the Patreon as well, or the progress of this map. I did a small animation as well, uh, which you can find on our Facebook page. Um, and really, this was quite an experiment for me. I'd not done the kind of relief uh, drawing art here before. Um, as you can see, and this is a, a nice experiment for me in these kinds of uh, drawings. So I'll try not to move it around too quickly, but that camera is reversed for me, so I'm just having a little bit of trouble. So here we have, uh, you can see we've got the, the, the wall of the mountain. So the idea is that the mountains come down to here, like this here, and then you've got your 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 two towers here and here. The big portcullis in between, massive, big, thick, cast iron, huge gate. Uh, and this whole area was very nice before. And um, what you would have is a, uh, this is the, the side that controls the border. And this is the side that doesn't. So what you see here is that on this side of the entrance, we have the stairway into Falcon Tower. We have stables. Uh, which you can just see there are a few stables for visitors and for the few people that man the towers. Um, and you can see that there's a slightly bigger paving area around here uh, for the uh, people who work here. Now, we have an escape tunnel out the back that gets you a bit further away from all the action and around the corner, so you're a bit hidden. Um, and that's kind of your escape route here <coughs> on Falcon Tower. We have uh, what would happen is anyone visiting dignitaries from the other side would come through this door here, through this door, and into this waiting area. We have a table and chairs. What is a little bit tricky to see on the on the video there is that actually we have going uh, along here and along here there are iron bars. So this area looks a bit like a big cell, but it's really to protect the guards who are looking after this area. Uh, you will have crossbowmen on either side, so iron bars will deter any kind of hand-to-hand -hand combat, but will allow defenders to easily uh, crossbow to death anyone who tries to get in under the guise of trade and sort of turn on uh, their visitors. We've got a winch here that you can see uh, will lift the uh, iron the iron gate. So this is kind of the meeting area. There's a, a side here, a sideboard, which uh, is really sort of shelves. And there'll be any of the kind of uh, paperwork in, etc. We've got a staircase uh, outside the doorway down to the uh, floor level, and then as I said, stables. If we have a look at the other tower, <clears throat> what we have here is there's no access to this tower at this level, as you can see. Now it's intentional. There will be a higher level that you'll be able to come across from Falcon Tower into this tower. Now, what we have here is some. Uh, residents for for people who work in the tower. So we've got bed uh, in bedrooms. You know, we've got a bedroom there. We've got another bed and bedroom here. We've got a latrine, uh, which no doubt goes has some sort of tube that feeds off uh, and spills the uh, you know soil uh, of the guards out that way. It's kept at the lowest level. Uh, so this is kind of a little safe. It, there's no entryway, there's kind of this piled up uh, rubble and rocks around it to secure it. Now, the foolhardy often try to climb around this tower here, but this whole space is open air. It's the mountainside, and often they are dashed down upon the rocks below. Um, now, what I wanted to do was represent the higher levels. So when I come to create the adventure location, I can actually uh, flush out, haha, <laughs> uh, flesh out, sorry, uh, ha where these staircases go um, and where 
Uh, we're going to have, you know, uh, armories, um, other bedchambers, kitchen, uh, dining area, uh, signal fire, all that kind of stuff for these towers. Because the idea is that people will come here, look after this border for a period of time. We're going to have a winch going up to a higher level for a kitchen, uh, you know, ways in and out of the tower that also will present interesting opportunities in an adventure for a games master or for players to sneak in, you know, if there's a, they're trying to get past this area um, surreptitiously, then there are ways to do that. So what I've done is I've literally traced under here, da -da -da -da, <coughs> the ta the, these towers. Now, I've done this in a bit of a weird format, but it kind of works from your point of view. So this will be, uh, so I'm in Britain, so this is the ground floor. In America, that would be the first floor. Um, and then we have the first, second, third, and eventually roof of each of the towers. And um, what I've been working on so far is this area here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide. Here we go. Slide that under there. So can we get all of this on one shot? Oh, nearly. Pete's figuring it out. Look at that. Right, okay, so <clears throat> the idea is that you will come up these stairs, walk up these stairs, and then come out here into this main area. This is, again, a, uh, a guard post waiting area. We will have a uh, weapons point and uh, uh, arrow slip, which I'll talk about a bit more. And then over this side, you'll come up, the, you'll come up these stairs this way, and that will bring you up here. Onto this floor where we have more uh, bedrooms, or one more bedroom. Again, we have arrow slit now because we're above our uh, targets down below, so we're at least 10 feet up. And uh, we're going to be able to have archers firing down into uh, this area here uh, from above this point. So it starts to get into how does this all work together, these different layers of the map. What we will have is a um, oh, sorry about that a large slot in here where the portcullis can raise up into when the winch is pulled up and where it can drop down from when the winch brings it down. We're going to have murder holes that will translate to uh, let me just double check this this square here. So if someone comes through this door that is not wanted. Hot oil can be poured upon their heads here, uh, which would be horrible if you've seen Game of Thrones. You've seen the uh, molten gold um, bit, which is horrible. But we have a nice door here to keep the chill air out. And as, as I was talking about earlier on, <clears throat> what we then have is we have a weapons rack, we have an arrow slot, and we have these uh, chairs and table. Now, then what we move into is we have these big, broad stairs for uh, these lower levels uh, where people m may need to move about a lot. But here, uh, and it's not as necessary to be as easily defendable because what we have here is our steep uh, spiral staircase that will go up into the towers beyond. And what I've done here so far is, is the outline for this level. We've then got the next level up. Uh, and we're going to have, um, this is kind of, if this is the armory here with some equipment and weapons, then up here we're going to be talking about uh, mainly a dining area, actually, and then a kitchen over this side, probably with a winch or something at one of these points on the exterior. And then higher up we will have um, defensible points, um, archers uh, looking out um, and then on the rooftops this one uh, the top of Falcon Tower will have ballista on it this will have one or two ballista but it'll have a signal fire on it because that's the eerie and that's the one that looks out over the pass and people can see it easily from afar from many angles as it's on the outside curve of the pass uh, and if there's serious trouble then they can always light the fire you know, like in Lord of the Rings with the, uh, with the Rohan. And uh, that will uh, alert nearby defenders who can come and help.
Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and do a bit more on this level here. So, uh, excuse me if I go a bit quiet, but what, and if you can just see the top of my head, which is unfortunately a big bald spot. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a bit more of this here, and hopefully, hopefully that'll be fine. Now, I tend to use what have we got? Uh, a HB, two HB, uh, or a HB pencil. Uh, nothing fancy, just your standard pencils. Um, that's pretty standard. My pens at the moment, I'm using uh, Unipin Fine Line, uh, which are made by the uh, Mitsubishi Pencil Company. Not that I'm endorsed by them or sponsored by them or anything. Just I find them useful and easy to get your hands on. This is a point three, which I've used to do these outlines here. I find it's good for that kind of thing. Um, what I will use is a, uh, a point eight. Sometimes for finishing, if I've finished everything, often what I'll try and do is pick out the main features or the major lines of the structure um in a point eight just to make them pop make them stand out um and it, it's helped on on several of uh my my maps that i've done on the patreon so go and check that out but most of most of the time i'm using the point three and i've actually become got a bit finer with things recently so before i was using uh your point three and a point one um Point one for really fine detail and point three for pretty much everything else. Now I find that I'm using a point one for most things and a point zero five for the fine detail, like wood grain on tables, doors, shadowing, uh, etc. Uh, and and that's how I've made this image that you can see here, which is Erie Tower uh, ground floor. Um, <clears throat> and on that you'll see uh, that. Um, the point three has been used for the outlines. The point one's used for sort of the floor tracing, the blocks of the walls, um, and then the point naught naught five has been used for the grain of the seat of the latrine, the shadow on the stairwell, and around the walls. So that that kind of um, gives you an idea of what what I do. I'll try and remember to say what pen I'm using at what time. <coughs> I'll try not to cough too much as well. Sorry about the coughing. Um, but so I've taken my point three and I have gone round these lines. Um, uh, and what I've done here, if you can see, is I've just notched in with the major, uh, with the point three. And what I'm trying to do is recreate this kind of look where uh, we have an indication of the giant blocks that the tower are made from um, and then at the same time I'll be doing a similar effect on the floor to indicate uh, where the paving slabs are made this is a big stone construction I want a real sense of large blocks of rock that have been chipped out and put together on other maps uh, such as the um, smugglers uh, hideout uh, I've made, I've done walls with smaller bricks and smaller blocks to indicate the kind of construction that you have. Uh, you can see a little bit. It's a little bit harder for you guys to see. You can see a little bit here. I've done some smaller blocks and that's interior walls, but still, I've done them in the same way, so it gives a sense that it's the same kind of rock, uh, not any kind of small pebbles and irregular shapes. I've tried to make them look fairly uniform and well formed. That way, this could be. You know, it could be just a well-crafted tower, or you could say this is kind of a dwarven construction if you're using, you know, your standard kind of fantasy races. Whatever kind of thing you want to do with it, uh, I want to try and um, have a certain style for certain maps. So <clears throat> what I will do is I'm just going to have this over here as a bit of a guide, and we've got the, the map on the screen for you guys. I'm just going to start to um, put some of the detail onto this that uh, we can we can see. Uh, so let's have a go. This is always the bit I have to say when I start again. Each time I start again and put the pen on the paper, I have this moment of 
is this going to translate into the way I want it to? Is it going to look how I want it to? And you never know, but, um, you know, little things occur. Sometimes you kind of make a mess. What you can always do is you scan all these maps in is you can do little edits afterwards. So if I do make any little tiny errors, then what I'll try and do is I'll try and tidy it up uh, afterwards. I use Inkscape, which is a great free scalable vector graphic um, software uh, package. Um, it's very useful, very handy. I make all the overlays for my shows in it as well. Um, if, if we get to uh, 50 patrons, however, I'm going to do a bit of a quality upgrade. I'm going to get Adobe Creative Cloud uh, subscription and um, and and do a bit do a bit better editing, do a bit better of, uh, map finishing, and all kinds of things. Now, feedback to me how well you can see this, okay? Because oh, I'm about to use the wrong pen. Look at that. Because um, I want this to be good, and if it requires more lighting, now I've got like a an additional light that I could use. But I think it's a bit bright, and I don't know whether it's too bright for what we're trying to do. Um, now, if you want me, <coughs> if you see that, and you think that looks better than that, it's hard to tell really. We'll see as we get going. Please give me feedback on the video below, or if you're on Patreon, comment on on this post. <coughs> uh, <coughs> so. What I do is I tend to trace, uh, you can see I've traced the grid on here. And that's because although we have uh, a grid insert in the book, uh, oh look, there's the old, uh, where are we? Just a little show off here. Oh, not that side, there we go. The old uh, D and D dungeon themed character sheet, um, <laughs> which you can get on the Patreon. Um, Although we have this nice grid sheet that goes under the page, it's quite well. I find it can move about, and um, if you're not clipping it, or I'm not using my clipboard, then it can be a bit tricky. So if I'm doing little bits like this, you can see I can draw the grid in, and then I'm okay. Uh, so let's let's get going. Okay, here we go. <coughs> so what I tend to do, let's get the feel of it. Is uh, it starts to you start feeling like oh is this is this really how I want this to go and I'm just like dab 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 trying to create just like the sense of lines rather than full lines it gets a bit tricky when you've got a small space like that up there and you're trying to create something that's different to that space there. You know, it, it 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 can be tough, you know, and you've got to bear in mind that you wanna you wanna. <clears throat> now I tend to do. I find that my lines are better when I'm doing them vertically, so I try not to go across this way. I will try and draw this way. So I'll do all of those, and then I will turn the page, and I will do it, do it the same way again. <clears throat> I just find it easier. Um, it may be the same for you. It may not. Um, let's just keep going you see and it's just making these rough I'm making these rough lines that hit I mean obviously here we're not gonna have any horizontal ones because we're talking about one one square on the grid uh, you know and this just gives you the little impression of blocks and <laughs> the great thing is your brain makes up a lot of this. I was worried a lot about my drawing skill, thinking it wasn't good enough. Um, and I started to try to do things digitally, which I didn't think were quite faithfully creating what I wanted to create. So then I sort of bit the bullet and thought, right, let's just get back. I used to draw maps a long time ago. You see, I've done a little bit there where I actually want to draw a thing. <clears throat> I've forgotten to draw in the bucket that sits at the foot here. You know, so often I'm sort of sitting here looking at 
lines going in one direction and I'm like, oh god, this doesn't quite look like the thing I want it to yet. And then I turn, turn the page, turn the page, turn the page, turn the page. Let's do it this way around, so you can see what I'm doing. Let's get this all lined up nicely. <clears throat> and then I'm just going the other way. So now I'm touching in between these lines. Sometimes you can kind of, when you change it, if you've been looking at your map from one way a lot of the time, you can kind of lose perspective and draw a line where there doesn't need to be a line or miss a line out. So just take your time. When you first, I, I'm not, not that I'm an expert or anything, but when I first reorient the map, I just take a second to think, right, this bit here is empty. This bit here I need to work on. This, you know, I've drawn all the things that sit on top of the floor, apart from the bucket. <clears throat> now I've drawn the bucket, I can get on with the floor. So again, I'm doing my vertical lines and I, I don't want them to be uniform, but what I do like to have is the odd sharp corner between some blocks. And there we can see that we're just adding in the details between these bricks uh, just to just to line it up you see and now that's starting to look like uh, on the screen here that's why I wanted to put this on the screen so you can kind of see have the finished bit there so we can compare as we go along and that's really I'm creating the the impression of paving slabs I'm not drawing them all and then creating like cracked edges and things this <coughs> it's kind of cheating it's kind of a accepted way of doing it. It's um, and, and most of you guys watching this probably do this already with your maps, but it's a good way to make the, the your brain fill in the gaps for you that there are paving slabs. Um, and it's that kind of thing that I was concerned about. I thought you had to draw every single thing and every single detail, but sometimes it's, it's the opposite. And I, I've, I like that about it. It's an interesting thing to discover the tricks <clears throat> and then what I'll often do is just let's bring it back round and then see if there's anything missing because this is the angle that I've drawn this map from from the beginning so this will be the easier position for me to check it out now what I've just noticed is some bang in the table. Here you can see that I've got wall sconces for torches uh, or lighting of some kind. If you wanted them to be glowing gems, then they can be. <clears throat> Often people forget things like lighting or latrines and that kind of thing. What I haven't done is put anything over here. So what I'm just going to do quickly, <clears throat> and these are very simple. They just give you a little, you know, I'm literally drawing uh, the letter C against the wall. And, and that gives you a little the impression of an iron ring that holds a torch. <clears throat> now, where am I going to put the other one? I don't want to put one right here because I think that's too close to whoever would be standing firing crossbow bolts out of this window, this arrow slot. That would give you a bit of heat. <clears throat> it would also probably cast a bit of light on that person and give someone something to look at. So I think if we're going to have another one, I'll probably put it over here so it's near this table again. Um, yeah, that's going to cast out that way. That's going to cast that way. Yeah, let's pop one here. They don't have to be uniform. They don't have to be in the center of every five foot square. Dungeons and Dragons, Games Masters, Dungeon Masters don't build the actual towers in real life. So let's put one there. Now what I've got here is a kind of weapon rack <clears throat> and all I was going to start by doing is marking out where I'm going to have, I don't think I'm going to have anything more than really like we've got the odd weapon jutting out or taking up a serious amount of space <clears throat> there. So we've got the impression of some things on this wooden structure here. So we've got two chairs, we've got a table, 
<clears throat> and then over this side, we've got a bed, which I haven't drawn yet. We've got a, a desk and another desk. That might be a, a nightstand or a chest of drawers or a cupboard or whatever you want it to be. Some of these things I leave a little bit ambiguous for the user of the map to sort of fill in some of the gaps. <clears throat> and when I create the adventure locations, they're open source uh, in a way. So they're not, um, I won't write it with stats and things for a specific setting. Uh, system, sorry, because I think that's kind of pigeonholing. Um, also, I find that sometimes I read modules and I think, oh, you know, I, I've this. I'd love to use the setting, but it doesn't quite tie in with the main bad guys I'm using in my adventure. It doesn't quite tie into the the plot. So what I've done is I've kind of made suggestions, you know, and said this is a good place for a combat here. This is a good uh, location for a social encounter with particular people in the smuggler's hideout <clears throat> i've referred to someone called the bean counter who would be a person a creature whatever gender race species profession you want but there's someone in the smuggler's hideout who runs the kind of business side of it and hides the fact that there's the hideout underneath i haven't said who that is i haven't given them a name picture stats that's down to the the uh, gm what i've said is i recommend that there is a person in this kind of position in this establishment that you should create fill in but they'll do this they'll do that also <clears throat> i do suggest tests and things for like breaking down doors but i try to be <clears throat> i try to be uh, system agnostic and say it's very difficult to break down this door, but it's very easy to pick the lock, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so that's kind of how I deal with the adventure location details. Um, right, let's have a look. So what what are we on to next? We've done that. Uh, I'm going to do some of the bed uh, and then table, wood effect on tables. And then I think shadow around the walls, bit on the doors. And then I think this level's done. Uh, you know, don't go crazy. You know, get in what you need to. Add a little bit of de detail and flavour. And uh, don't overdo it because, you know, if you're if you're trying to, especially if you're trying to knock out some maps for um, some adventures you're in. So I'm just trying to position this in a way that means you guys can see what I'm doing. At the same time, I'm just going to bring this in. I often find, don't be afraid to bring in your own stuff <clears throat> to reference or other people's maps. You know, there are some great people out there. Dyson Logos, Dark Realm Maps, Foot of the Mountain, obviously Devon Roos out there. You know, there's some really good people, much better than myself. You know, <clears throat> I really enjoy doing this. I'm not the best person in the world at doing this. I've got a lot better quite quickly, I've found, and I think the Mountain Toll keeps great um, for, for my own achievement. Um, but... I'm under no illusion that I'm the best map drawer in the world, um, which uh, which is actually funny because in the real world, I work in maps and spatial data. So, yeah. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and <clears throat> flesh out this bed a bit. I'm gonna, I've got my other bed here. You see, I don't want it to look exactly the same, but the idea of tattered. See, I've got one bed here where the chap. Uh, let me let me bring this. Whoever lives, whoever sleeps in this bed tidies it up quite nicely whoever sleeps in this bed doesn't just little little extras like that can just add a little bit of flavor to an otherwise boring feature of a map there's all kinds of things you can do and i i keeping it quite simple here uh, with this one mainly because i'm having to draw these extra levels i don't want to go too overly complicated it would extend it out i don't want to keep the patrons waiting too long uh, and then we can see we can we can get somewhere. So I'm going to section off where the pillow is going to go. A little wrinkly line. This one's going to be a, a, a tatty bed, I think. We're going to have some sheets all wrinkled up. Let's put a little pillow on there. They do quite well these um, guards. They've got pillows and everything. There you go. <clears throat> Just a little extra detail uh, there to flesh out your bed. You know, make it a little bit messy, dirty. Right. 
<coughs> now, what I'm going to do next, I think, is uh, we're going to get the 0 0.05 out, and I'm going to do some shadow. Okay, well, no, first off, sorry, let's do the wood effect on the uh, tables and chairs. Um, less on the chairs, on the tables and sideboards. So this is little, little, little wavy. Oh, my, my pen's not. Yeah, there we go. Little wavy lines uh, that don't quite meet in the middle. You know, they sort of start and don't quite meet, and then they overlap. <clears throat> and I often find. Uh, what I'll what I'll uh, do is have um, them sort of mirror so that there's a gap between the lines and it alternates along the piece of wood. Uh, it gives a nice little wood effect. Every now and then, just put a little blob in for a little um, knot in the wood if you want the wood to look like that. Otherwise, you can make it look a bit more pristine. Okay. Here we go, and this is what I mean. So can you see what I'm doing here? I've got a gap here, yeah, in this line. And then what I do is I'll have it sort of overlap. Let's go in here, have a little blob for a knot. Have it not quite meet. And then go in between it. Now what I've done, started doing recently is doing a bit on doors as well. So you know that they're wooden as opposed to... Um, as opposed to the stone around it, because <clears throat> this map is black and white, and you have a different uh, contract with the user when you do a black and white map compared to a color map. With a color map, you can put less detail in, because when you color it, you add detail purely just by adding those colors. You can color what boxes different colors. Suddenly, they're different types of wood. The grain can look the same, even though it may not in the real world. Different types of rock, you can draw rocks the same, but you may then paint one uh, grey, one a dark grey, one a green grey, one a blue grey, one a brown grey. There's many ways to do it. <clears throat> when you're doing black and white map, I feel, and I'm starting to learn this and starting to figure it out a little bit, as it's the whole thing is a learning process, is you have to put a little bit more detail in um if you want to go to that level if you want people to be able to distinguish between different uh, materials very easily um right so we've done um let's have a look we've done the tables we've done the weapon rack we've got the bucket uh we've got the 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 stone uh, effect done um we have over here we've got the bedroom done we've got the door done what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just make a little, uh, there's a gap there, so I may make a little hinge to fill that gap up, uh, just to give it that extra feeling. You don't want things to look like they're spaced out too much. We've got our uh, torch sconces, and we've got our stairs ready. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> do um, I will do the cracks in the pavement, and then I will do... Uh, with the point one because it's the same as the lines between the uh, the slabs <coughs> and then I'll do the shadow now <coughs> excuse me on this map I've added cracks in the pavement and let me bring this across here uh, you can see here's a good example here right you see this little squiggly line here little squiggly line here little squiggly line here because the floor of the rooms looks very similar to the walls, what I wanted to do is distinguish a bit between them. So the walls and interiors are more pristine because obviously there's no contact with those. But the floor um, slabs have got a few little cracks in them. There's a bit of wear and tear from people walking across them. <clears throat> and I just wanted to reflect that. And it helps... In a black and white map, there's a lot of stone construction to distinguish between floor and wall. Obviously, I put shadow on the interior of the walls, as you can see, in Falcon Tower and on the uh, the nice little map here. Um, but sometimes it just helps to, to have that little extra thing to distinguish. So all I do, and it's not rocket science, and obviously you'll have figured this out if you've seen any, seen any of my maps. <coughs> 
Uh, still in focus. Yeah, still in focus. Here we go. Is just go and just add a few. I go crazy again. I like to try and space them out, but sometimes in these maps you don't get a lot of space because you're uh, working in a little. Here we go. So uh, uh, take the opportunity. So these ones I've only got these lines this way. So I'm out this area. I want to take the opportunity to use some of these. What are horizontal lines to me right now, and, and yeah, and to you, uh, and not always have them going in the same way. You don't want it to look too uniform. And then let's break another one there. So just a little bit to add a little bit extra. It's really minor, but it adds a little bit um, to those pavement bits. I tell you what, let's put a bit. He's someone is getting out of this bed a lot here, so let's have a little crack in the actual pavement there just a tiny one i don't know if you can see that very well i've done like a little hole where they've obviously got out of bed all the time and put their feet on the floor and jumped up and down because it's bloody cold <clears throat> so that was the point one doing the finer detail across uh the the section of the towers um then i'm going to go and do uh the shadows now this bit I find a bit nerve wracking because this is the opportunity to mess everything up, cock everything up. <clears throat> now here, uh, and on, on the, actually probably easier on the screen, uh, you can see, you can see that I have done the uh, lines around the walls. Uh, and what I've tried to do is show a sense of depth. So I've gone around the bed, around the floor but then I've also done on top of it slightly next to the wall to show that there's that those levels of shadow on the uh, on the interior <coughs> and I'll see where we're sort of in corners there's a bit more shadow uh, and really these are just lines skirting the edge but done in a way to sort of build a sense of of shadow <coughs> so let's move that out of the way and uh, I will uh, do a bit of this. Uh, so we want to go sort of around, around the edges like this. A little bit around, can you see that? A little bit around the bed. So I'm just going around the bed a little bit because there's a lot of shadow here because it's wall to floor. There's a little bit of shadow here because it's bed to floor. A little bit of shadow here wall to bed so the more depth um, look, we're looking down in the map I want to put a bit more a little bit more um, shadow or what I will do on the on the stairs is I'll put more shadow the bit where the stairs is going to another floor just because it's kind of further away from this floor uh, so a little bit down there And then we're going to go uh, on what I'm going to do on these staircases is on the lower step, put a little bit of shadow, on, you know, so we can see that there is a. And it doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be amazing. These things are like little indicators. You see like that, that just gives you a little sense of depth on those stairs. I'll do the same now spiral staircase a bit more tricky but on a spiral staircase you can put more shadow near the wall so that's quite cool and then what we have is we have the shadow i'm going to put more shadow up here to indicate that this area this area here is further away from the floor um and you're kind of going up the stairs so we're going to go up here like this, a bit more there, a bit more here, and it's just kind of like adding that extra sense. There we go. And it works quite well. There we go. 
looks a bit like the other ones. If we bring in the other map here, we can see that this is looking pretty much like those stairs. Just forgot to do just underneath the bottom step there. <coughs> yeah, there you go. That's one of the towers. Levels done. Looks a lot like that one. Uh, quite happy with it. Oh, hang on. Hang on, hang on. We're missing the little breaks in the walls. Look at that. We missed that out. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, that's cool. Right, and then we're going to do the same on this staircase. So, let's have a look. Uh, we will take this over there. Sorry. Right, here we go. Let's do some more. Uh, let's do some more shadows. Let's do some more shadows. Put some little cracks in the edge of that brick there because this is a gap here you see so I'm just putting a few little wear lines there from where we were um, lifting and dropping that poor colour so uh, <coughs> let's go along here let's go along here Can I put a little bit about the base of the door just to show it's a little bit darker there again we've got an arrow slit which is going to be a lot darker There we go. See, I'm losing it now as I'm going. In a, it don't never try not to compromise your drawing direction. If you feel uncomfortable doing a lines in a certain direction, move your piece of paper, move your hand, move your move the direction of your drawing, and find I'm smoother this way. I'm I'm better up that way and that way. If I'm coming in towards the from the right to the left, I find it harder to do. So, that is pretty much that level of the dungeon, of the uh, towers done. <clears throat> there might be a little bit of tidying up to do about the pencil lines, uh, you know, scan and get it in there. I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> I think, maybe um, do as much. No, I will do, actually, that was fine. That, that's how I'm going to do the rest of the levels, I think. <clears throat> And as I said, we're going to move up and do more levels, and then this whole map will become one adventure location altogether. The focus of the map, of the adventure location, will be this level. However, the uh, additional levels will get um, good, a bit of a write-up uh, so that they are... Uh, a little bit of detail on each level. I'm not going to go into huge amounts on these levels because otherwise this will turn into like a 20 page PDF. <clears throat> I like to keep it at between 8 and 10 pages. I think it's uh, quick and easy for you guys to read. It's quick and easy for me to make. Uh, you know, a couple of hours on maps and uh, we should be ready. So that's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I think that's enough drawing for one night, and if you've sat through all of that, then thank you very much. As I said at the beginning, this has been a bit of a tester. Sorry about the cough, so I haven't been able to edit out. 
<clears throat> I have been suffering from a bit of a cold. But this has been a bit of a tester for the first uh, Let's Draw map, or whatever I end up calling it, for the Mountain Toll Keep. <clears throat> hopefully you've enjoyed this, hopefully you like the map, hopefully you like uh, the other stuff we're doing. This is all done to support the YouTube channel, Garblad Games. Um, so please go and check out our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. If you're watching this on our Patreon and you've ended up there, thank you. Please check out all of our free content uh, and all of our uh, stuff below. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Please give us comments about the, the video. Um, you know, that will help us to improve in the future. If the lighting needs to improve, for example. <clears throat> Um, and don't forget to press the little bell icon so every time you make a new video you get an instant notification that there's a new episode of your favourite role playing channel uh, on YouTube don't forget to check out um, our, all of our shows Masters and Monsters, our Meiji Ascension game we've got Flint and Steel which is Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay we've got Vostok's Chance which is Scion RPG <clears throat> and we've got Star Trek Morpheus which Funnily enough, is Star Trek Adventures. All of that's going on on the channel. There's loads of stuff going on on our Discord. We've got a red bubble, everything. There's loads of links below. Please go check it all out. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed that. And hopefully I'll get an opportunity to do another one soon. If not, enjoy the the adventure location. If you're a Patreon uh, patron, thank you very much for supporting us. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.